All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about integration and the natural log function. And so if you remember when we first learned the power rule for integration, we said that the integral of x to the power of n dx was equal to x to the power of n plus one divided by that new exponent n plus one. And then of course you have plus c. But we said that only worked as long as n was not equal to negative one. And so that meant that we did not know how to take the integral of x to the negative first power, right? That is when n is equal to negative one. We have x to the negative first power, and of course that could be rewritten to be one divided by x, and so we did not know how to take the integral of that function. But now with the help of the natural log function, we can. And so if we recall our derivative rules for the natural log function, which we just learned in a previous lesson, we know that the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to one divided by x. And then we have the chain rule version of that in case what is inside our natural log function is a function other than x. And so we have this different rule where the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of u is equal to the derivative of u or u prime divided by u. And so the reason why this is important is that we have a function whose derivative is one divided by x, right? And so taking the derivative of a function and integrating a function are opposite operations. And so if we wanna find the integral of one divided by x or the antiderivative of this function, we just have to ask ourselves what function has the derivative of one divided by x? And we know that that is the natural log of the absolute value of x. And so from that knowledge, we get what we call the log rule for integration. And so here we have that the integral of one divided by x or x to the negative first power dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And then similarly, this can be applied in a scenario where u substitution would be used. We have that one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so what you're going to find is that this log rule for integration is going to be very helpful for integrating rational functions. And so let's take a look at some examples. All right, so here's our example. We have the integral of three divided by x dx, and we're going to need to use this rule to find the integral or the antiderivative of this function because we have x to the negative first power or one divided by x. Now, in this case, we have three divided by x, but that is just three times one divided by x. And so we could rewrite this to be three times the integral of one divided by x dx. And so we know that the integral of one divided by x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And so we'll have that this is equal to three times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And so now this could be your final answer, but we actually could simplify it a little bit by using one of the properties of logs that we know. And that property is that if you have the natural log of some value a to the power of n, that is equal to that n times the natural log of a. And so in this case, we're going to reverse this process. We are currently in this state right here. And so we can move this three from being on the outside of the natural log function to the inside to have x cubed. And so this will be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed plus c. And so then that will be my final answer for this integral. All right, so this was an example of the most basic case of taking the integral of a function that will result in a natural log function. But let's look at an example where we're going to need u substitution. Okay, so here we have the integral of one divided by two x plus one dx. And the reason we need to use the log rule for integration in this case is because we have a rational function where the denominator is raised to a power of one, right? This quantity two x plus one is to the power of one. If we instead had that to the power of two, we would still need to use u substitution to solve this integral, but we wouldn't need to use the log rule for integration. And so since that is to the first power, we will have to use the log rule. And so if we let u equal to two x plus one, right, we'll have two x plus one, then we'll want to take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of two x plus one. That is going to be two because the derivative of two x is just two. And then the derivative of one is just zero because the derivative of any constant is zero. And so then if we solve for du here, We'll have that du is equal to two times dx, but notice that in our integral over here that we only have a one dx, and so I don't see an extra two that can be replaced with du, and so I'm going to divide that two over to the other side. So we're gonna divide both sides by two, and so we'll have that du divided by two is equal to dx, and so now we can replace dx with du divided by two. 
And if you're not familiar with this process of use substitution, feel free to check out our lesson on that topic that I will have linked here for you to click on. And so if we rewrite this integral, we'll have that is equal to the integral of one divided by u times du divided by two, right? We replaced two x plus one with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced dx with du divided by two. And so that's what we have right here. And so we can pull this one half to the outside. And so this will be equal to one half times the integral of one divided by u du. And now we have an integral of one divided by u where we can use our log rule for integration, right? The integral of one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so this will be equal to one half times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, but we're not done yet because we need to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is two x plus one. And so this will be equal to one half times the natural log of the absolute value of two x plus one plus c. And that will be the antiderivative of our function or the answer to this integral. Okay, let's look at another example where we would need to use u substitution. All right, so here we have the integral of x divided by x squared plus seven dx. And so we're going to want to use u substitution to integrate this integral because it's too complicated to use any of our basic rules, right? We can't use the power rule for this integral. And so what we want to look for is a function and its derivative. And so in this case, I see x squared plus seven in a denominator here, and I know that the derivative of an x squared function will be a function where x is to the first power. And so that lines up with what we have in the numerator. And so if I set u equal to x squared plus seven, then that means that du dx, or the derivative of u with respect to x, will be equal to two x, right? We use the power rule on x squared. We multiply two down and subtract one from the exponent. So we have two x and the derivative of seven is zero because seven is a constant. And so now our derivative here is a function where x is to the first power, which is a function that we have in our integral here that can be replaced with du. Now let's solve for du here, and we'll have that du is equal to two x dx. But notice that I don't see a two in the numerator anywhere in this integral. So I'm gonna divide that two over. So we just have x and dx, which are present in our integral, and so they can be replaced by our du term. And so we'll have that du divided by two is equal to x dx. And so then if we rewrite this integral, we will have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u times du divided by two, right? So we replaced x squared plus seven with u, right? That's what we set it equal to. And we replaced x and dx with du divided by two. And so just like our previous problem, I'm gonna pull this one half out to the front. And so we'll have that this is equal to one half times the integral of one divided by u du, which we know the integral of one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so this will be equal to one half times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And now we can replace u with what we set it equal to. And this will be equal to one half times the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus seven plus c. But now notice in this case, we can actually get rid of these absolute value bars because anything you plug into this x will be squared and anything squared is positive. And so we don't need these absolute value bars. The only reason that they are there to begin with is because the natural log function is only defined for positive values. And so those absolute value bars are ensuring that those values inside are positive. But since we know they're going to be positive because of the x squared, we can just use normal parentheses. And so with that, this is the antiderivative of this function or the answer to this integral. All right, let's look at a different example. All right, next we have the integral of x squared plus x minus six divided by x minus two. Now, when you see a function like this in your integral where you have a polynomial in the numerator, you should try and factor that polynomial first to see if it will cancel out with what is in your denominator, especially if it's a term like x minus two or x plus one or x minus three, right? Quantities like that that will cancel out with the factorization of a polynomial or more specifically a quadratic like we have right here. And so if we were to factor this, we would have to look at the factors of negative six. Since the coefficient of our x squared term is one, we just have to look at our last term here. And we know that we can get negative six 
by multiplying positive two and negative three. And we could also get negative six by multiplying negative two and positive three. Now you could also use negative one and six or positive one and negative six. But if you look at our middle term here, the coefficient is one, right? Positive one. And so if I look at these two sets of factors, which one, if I add the numbers together, will get me a positive one? That will be these two right here, negative two and three, right? Negative two plus three is positive one. And so that tells me that we will have that x squared plus x minus six will be equal to x minus two times x plus three. And that will still be divided by x minus two, right? So we factored that function. And now you can see that these two quantities will cancel out. And you would just have that this is equal to the integral of x plus three dx. And so this doesn't require the log rule of integration, right? You could integrate this using the power rule which is pretty simple. This would just be equal to x to the power of one plus one, which is two divided by two plus three times x plus c. But what if this denominator term didn't cancel out with something in the numerator here, right? What if instead of having x minus two, we had x plus two? Then this becomes a different problem or a problem where we're going to need to use the log rule for integration. And so let's back it up here and let me show you what I mean. In order to get this in a form where we can even use the log rule for integration, we need to perform long division for this quotient. And so this is something that you learned probably in a pre-calculus course or maybe an algebra course, but we're gonna go through it here briefly. We will have x squared plus x minus six, and that will be divided by x plus two. And so what we're gonna do is ask ourselves, what do we have to multiply by x to get x squared? And that would be x, right? If we multiply x by x, we get x squared. And so we're going to have x squared down here. And then we'll multiply this x by two, and that will be equal to two x, so we'll have plus two x. And then we're going to subtract these terms from this quadratic. And if we do that, we'll have x squared minus x squared. And so that will be zero. And you'll have positive x minus two x. And so that will be negative x. And then you have negative six minus nothing. And so we still have minus six. And so now we have to ask ourselves, what do you have to multiply by X to get negative X? And that will be negative one, right? Negative one times X would be negative X. And so now we're gonna have negative X and then we'll multiply this negative one by our two. And so we'll have negative two. And then remember, we're going to be subtracting these terms. And so if we do that, we will have negative X minus negative x, which is just negative x plus x. And so that will be equal to zero. And then you'll have negative six minus negative two or negative six plus two, which is negative four. And so this is our remainder in this case. And so we can rewrite this function or this quotient of functions and we'll have the integral of what we found by doing this long division. We have x minus one. So I will have x minus one, and then we're going to add the remainder divided by our divisor. So we're gonna have negative four divided by x plus two. So we will have negative four divided by x plus two, and this is all inside the integral. And so now what we have here is instead of a function that we have no idea how to integrate, we have a function where some of the terms we can use the power rule for integration for, and the other term we can use the log rule of integration for. And so we can actually split up this integral into two separate integrals to make things a little bit easier for us. And we'll have that this is equal to the integral of x minus one dx minus, right, this negative will come out front, the integral of four divided by x plus two dx. And now we can integrate this function using the power rule and this function using the log rule. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to the integral of x minus one. So using the power rule, we will have x to the power of two divided by two minus x, right? We add one to the exponent and divide by that new exponent. So we have one plus one, which is two divided by two. And then the integral of a constant is just that constant times x. And so we have minus x and then we will subtract this integral. And we're going to want to use u substitution for this integral because notice that we can set x plus two equal to u and that will allow us to use the log rule for integration. And so we'll have that u is equal to x plus two, which means that du dx will be equal to one, right? The derivative of x is just one and the derivative of two is zero. 
and so you'll have that du is equal to dx if we multiply dx to both sides. And so we can replace dx with du, and we can also pull this four outside of the integral, and we'll have four times the integral of one divided by u, du, right? We replaced x plus two with u, and we replaced dx with du. And so now we'll have that this is equal to x squared divided by two minus x minus four times the integral of one divided by u, du, which we know is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so then we can replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x plus two. And so I'm gonna rewrite this and we'll have x plus two and then plus c. And so this would be the final answer to our integral in this case. And so even though this function may not have looked like a function that you would need to use the log rule for integration for, by using that long division process, we could rewrite this quotient in a way that we could use the rule for to make this integral possible. So here we have a different example. We have the integral of tangent x dx. And so this might seem like an odd function to take the integral of in this scenario, right? How are we going to use the log rule for integration for this function? Right, this doesn't look like a rational function where we would want to use the log rule for integration. Well, what we can do here is we can rewrite the tangent function to be a quotient of two functions, right? We know from one of our trigonometric identities that tangent is sine divided by cosine. And so this integral is equal to the integral of sine x divided by cosine x dx. And now we have an integral of a rational function where we can use u substitution and the log rule for integration, right? Because we have a function and its derivative here of cosine and sine. And so watch what happens if we set cosine equal to u. We'll have u is equal to cosine x, which means that du dx or the derivative will be equal to negative sine x. And so if we solve for du, we'll have du is equal to negative sine x dx. But of course we have a positive sine x here. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative one. And so we'll have negative du is equal to sine x dx. And so we can replace sine x dx with negative du. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u times negative du, right? So we replaced cosine x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced sine x dx with negative du, which is what we set that equal to. And so we can actually pull that negative out to the front. So I'm gonna do that here real quick. We'll just have negative right there. And so we just have the integral of one divided by u du. And so that will be equal to negative natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so if we replace u with what we set it equal to, this will be equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine x plus c. And so that's the answer to this integral, or more specifically, this is the answer to the integral of tangent x. We now have a new integral rule for a trigonometric function, right? Before, we only knew the integral for the sine and cosine function, right? We also knew how to take the integral of secant squared x or secant times tangent, but we didn't know how to take the integral of just tangent or just secant or just cotangent or just cosecant. And so using the same method that we used here, we can actually find the integral of the other standalone trigonometric functions. And so that's what we're gonna look at next. I'm gonna put them up on the screen here. These are our trig rules for integration. And so we already knew these, right? These are our old ones that we already knew. We knew that the integral of sine u du is equal to negative cosine u plus c, and the integral of cosine u du is equal to sine u plus c. But now we have these four new ones for the other four trigonometric functions that we did not know how to integrate on their own. And so we have that the integral of tangent u is equal to what we just found, a negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine u plus c. Then we have the integral of cotangent u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of sine u plus c. Then we have the integral of secant u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus c. And then finally, we have the integral of cosecant u du is equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u and then plus c. And so those are all our trig rules for integration. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.